Right now I'm going to go over some of the gear that I use when I come out here. Uh, first of all, my fly rod. I am pike fishing and I'm using a lightweight fly rod. I really enjoy lightweight fly rods uh, because of the feel that you get when you're fighting a fish. I love seeing that rod bend over. And uh, you can't do that when you're using a heavier rod or what uh, in the fly fishing industry is called a fast action rod. The fast action rods are stiffer and uh, they're made so that you can cast them easier. Uh, if you're not very good at casting, I do, I do recommend getting a, a, a fast action rod. But uh, if you're like me and you already know how to cast, uh, I recommend getting a, a medium, to medium action rod for pike. Not a slow action rod, that'll have too much bend in it. You can't control them when you get them up close to you. Uh, medium action rod works great. Uh, the lightweight rod, uh, lightweight sense comes from the fact that the rod that I use is a 5.6 weight. It's very light. It's actually made for trout. Uh, and not big trout either. I mean, this is made for your average 14 to, to 18 inch trout. Uh, but I love using it on pike. I've caught a 44 inch pike on this rod. I caught a 42 inch pike on this rod. I caught 39 inch pike on this rod. Uh, I even caught a 30 pound catfish out of this lake on a 5-6 weight fly rod and it just feels fantastic lightweight rods like this feel great when you know the pike are only 16 inches or 40 inches it doesn't matter they feel great all of them do so anyways that's why I use the lightweight rod uh, I use a 9 foot rod uh, because uh, obviously for casting uh, you get that distance out there one tip that I really want to key in on is the fact that uh, the leader length that I use. Now the leader length that I do, almost every kind of fishing that I do, whether it's river fishing or lake fishing or, or what, I always make the leader length exactly the same length from tip to butt. The same length as my rod. And I'll tell you why. It's because if that leader is any longer than your rod, then you to, in order to land a fish by hand, you have to pull the rod way behind you. You lose all control of the fish that way in order to reach down and grab them. All right? Uh, I use a, a leader that's exactly the same length as my rod. It's easy to control. I can easily control the fish while I've got them within rod's length. So that's why I use the uh, leader length the same as my rod length. Uh, also, most of the waters that I fish are not going to be more than 10 feet deep. Uh, I just don't like to fly fish in deeper water like that. I, I don't get as much control over my fly. And to, to be quite honest, I'm not patient enough to let it sink all the way down that far. <laughs> you know, uh, I like shallow water fishing. That's why f fly fishing for pike is so much fun on a fly rod because you can do it in shallow water. So anyways, rod 5-6 weight. Uh, I use a medium action because I'm an experienced fly fisherman. I know how to cast. Uh, you don't really need to cast more than 20 or 30 feet max. That's all. These pike are in close to shore. Uh, even when I use my boat, I don't really fish from the boat too much. I simply use the boat to get from one side of the lake to the other side of the lake. And then I fish from shore on the other side of the lake. That's mostly what I use it for. I do fish off of it now and again, and it is fun sometimes. But uh, five, six weight rod, nine feet long, uh, leader length, same length as your rod. Steel leaders, just a little eight inch steel leader. Uh, it doesn't have to be like super long, doesn't have to be the entire leader length, anything like that. Uh, I've read a lot of books, uh, a lot of articles, uh, I've seen videos where they say, you know, oh, use a full length uh, braided, you know, leader material, all that stuff. You know, braided leaders cost like 30, 40 bucks. I can't afford that, I'm a poor man. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of you people are too. And that's why I wanted to make this video. I want to let you know that you can come out here, catch 40 plus inch pike on cheap gear. You don't have to go out and spend all your money. You don't have to break into your savings. Just go out there, buy a $50 fly rod. Uh, as far as the reel goes, definitely get a, a, a decent reel. Don't go with a real cheapo reel. Uh, the way you can tell the difference is if it has plastic components, no good. 
it's scrap. It's no good for, for fly fishing for pike or, or catfish or whatever you catch up here. Uh, you got to have some real components in your reel. Uh, this reel here, I went ahead and spent a little bit extra money on it. I got a $50 reel instead of buying, you know, like a cheapo $20 one or something. Uh, it's a little bit small for the amount of line that I want to use out here. This is a, a river fishing reel, but I get by with it. I just don't want to spend the extra money because I don't have it uh, on, you know, a bigger reel designed to hold more line for lake fishing. I don't have the money to spend on it. So that's why I just come out here with river gear. It's, it's no big deal. Uh, it's working for me, as you can see, and it'll work for you too. So you don't have to spend a lot of money. Uh, the line I get, it's all floating. Floating line from end to end. I don't care about sinking tip lines and stuff like that. You know, if you, if you, want, if you know how to use them, that's great. Go ahead and use them. If you want to use them, you know, use them. Personally, I've tried sinking weight lines before and I've not gotten any more productivity uh, with my fishing from sinking tip to floating tip. Like I said, I fish primarily in 10 foot deep water. If my leader length is 10 feet long or 9 feet long, I'm going to get down to where the fish are. Plain and simple, I don't need a sinking tip line. You know, just a regular floating line. This is cheapo line, pretty much the cheapest I can find. Uh, the actual leader itself is uh, simply 10 pound test line. Uh, I think I paid maybe $2.50 for a 500 yard spool. <laughs> You don't have to go expensive, all right? Um, let's see, let's go into the bag. You notice too, obviously, my fly fishing videos, I don't wear a fly fishing vest. I have several, but I don't like using them. Uh, I've been fly fishing for so long that uh, I know exactly what gear I need to bring with me, and it all fits in this pack right here. When I'm using a fly fishing vest, Every time I bend over to, you know, release a fish, grab a fish out of the water, I usually have stuff falling out of the pockets. I hate that. You know, Velcro pockets, whatever. It doesn't matter. I, I just don't want anything to fall out of my pockets. I can lean over with this and have absolutely no problem whatsoever. I can lean all the way over to the water, release my fish. I never have to worry about a thing. That's why I like this pack right here. It's a back waist pack. And uh, it's got your bottle holder pockets over here, which I don't use for bottles, I use them for gear. Uh, it's got one big pocket up here. I'll show you what I keep in this big pocket up here. For Flagstaff, you're always gonna wanna keep a windbreaker, rain breaker with you. This one here, is what I use. It's always windy up here. Rain will move in on you when you're least expecting it. You can't really tell. And when a rainstorm is finished, you go down to the lake, 10 minutes later, the rain circles back around and hits you again. So always have this gear with you. Bring wind gear. Uh, if you're going to come up here, definitely a must have. So, got that. Uh, keep. Uh, a good pair of fish scissors, cutters, whatever I need them for, I got them. My cheapo spool of line. <laughs> Bring the whole spool with me. There's a lot of rocks down here. Uh, the weeds are really, really uh, thick and, and you know they're hard to break. Uh, you'll break your line before you break the weeds most times. Uh, let's see. got uh, in this back pocket right here, which you always see me reaching back to, my fly box. For my pike flies, I use something that's pretty cheap. It's actually a CD case. It's a soft vinyl CD case. Zips up, zips back, holds about 30 CDs normally. For me, it holds about 60 flies. That's why I like it. I can slide my flies in, slide them out. Simple as that. Very economical, very useful. 
Uh, works a lot better than hooking, you know, your big old pike flies into the foam boxes. Ruins the foam real quick. Plus, the flies don't stay in that much, and you know, you got and you got feathers sticking out of the box and stuff like that. With this, my feathers are sticking out, but I'm not ruining them at all. I'm not slamming a lid on them or anything. So it keeps them all nice and fluffy the way they should be. What else we get? On my right side, because I'm right-handed, I got my forceps hanging off. You always got to have forceps up here. Uh, chapstick. We are in the desert up here, so you're going to want to bring some chapstick with you when you come up here. On the other side here, I've got another fly box. The fly box is a bit different, but you know it carries all my flies still. Easy access, that's my thing. Also in that pocket, I'm going to have uh, my clippers for my leader. Easy access to the clippers. Uh, another must-have up here is going to be band-aids. Let's not kid ourselves. We are handling pike. <laughs> Every now and again, you are going to get cut by some teeth. So you want to have some band-aids with you. I like the cloth band-aids because if I get cut right on my finger where I'm stripping my line through, then uh, the cloth band-aid acts just like my skin basically. It can, I can strip over that with no problem whatsoever. My, my line doesn't like get caught up on it or feel rough going over it or anything like that. What else we got in here? We got uh, line cleaner. Run this up and down your line after you're done. This lake can get pretty dirty sometimes. You get a lot of debris floating around, especially if you're on the side of the lake that the wind is blowing to. Uh, use your line cleaner after you're done. An extra pair of clippers. Always carry an extra pair of clippers. Usually anything that I have hanging off, I'll carry two of. I'll carry one on the little hanger, and then I'll carry another one in the pocket. So my, another pair of leader clippers, another pair of forceps in here as well. And uh, of course, big pocket I'll use for lunch, juice, whatever. Uh, but that's pretty much it. You know, as far as the box, as far as the bag goes, and it's a fly fishing pack. It works really well, as you can see. Never gets in the way. Ever gets in the way. I can sit down with it on. I can stand up. I can bend over. I can do whatever you want.